Many people think that transferring the Revit data to Unreal Engine is that easy. But in a real world, this is something like this and you have lots of tips and workflows that you need to be careful about and to do them to have a great workflow between Revit and Unreal Engine. For example, we have our Revit files in here and we, want to, we don't want to have our, for example, furnitures inside. You can go to VG and you can hide them and then you can export your file and data smith will respect to these parts for example you can hide any category that you don't want to see in your unreal engine for example let's go to vg and let's turn off the generic model and now we don't have our kitchen in here and then we can bring it to unreal another part that unreal uh, data smith will respect to that too is the temporary height and isolate uh, in revit and also a section box for example, if you want to hide this and you want some other roofs, but you want just hide this specific roof in here, you can just click it and you can hide it and it will be count as a hide object and it will not be exported anymore to our Unreal Engine file. And also if you want to have just a render for a specific parts of your building, for example, I want, to, I want to render for my kitchen, you can create a section box for it and then you can create a Unreal Engine file just from this part of your building and you don't need to bring all of your Revit parts in your, into your Unreal Engine. Now for example, let's bring our kitchen in here to see it in results. For example, let's go to the data smith and click on file import and let's select our kitchen. Let's click on open and let's see it in results. I want to bring it in content category and I don't want any light or cameras and animations I want the geometry and materials because I want to because I want to talk about the materials after this you can see now in just in this project now we just have our kitchen and we can uh, assign materials and do all of the things that we want to it for example let me select this one and let's give it some lower intensity to see our kitchen more better and now this is better. You can see now we just have our kitchen and we don't need to be worried about other parts of our building. The other tip that I want to talk about is about link files. When you have link files in your Revit project, uh, Data Smith will try to find those links and transfer those project data, but it has some bugs sometimes. So my suggestion is to unlink those uh, files and then create another data smith files for them and bring all of them together in your uh, Unreal Engine project. Now the next part that I want to talk about is about materials. Let's go to the uh, content browser in this part. From here, let's go to content browser. And now this is the project that we brought. Let's go to the content and you can see we have the final model. And in here we have material. Let's see some of the material I want to talk about some of them you can see all of the materials are in sans parameters in here or they are material in stands. for example let me select this one and let's go to the materials for example let's click on this one you can see this is a instance material and if you want to uh, do some uh, major modif modification into the parent material you need to find a parent from here and you need to go to the parent and now you can see the blueprint here and you can do anything in the parent level of the materials if you want some of the time people ask me where are they and i can't find the main material that's the way you can find the main material and you can adjust the uh, parent material let's talk about the textures and uvs when you break the bring the materials you will have the textures as an asset beside of your materials and you have some, all of uh, we can say all of the settings that you have in revit for your textures for example we have a scales we have uh, rotation and also all of the parameters that we have but if you have used procedural textures like checkboard noises that kind of textures doesn't support in data smith workflow so you need to create them again in your unreal engine before going to the next topic which is scene layer and management make sure to like this video to help youtube to reach this video to more people there are two two things that you need to know the philosophy behind them the scene hierarchy is according to your level so make sure to host your elements to write levels when you uh, place them in uh, revit for example if you want to something on level one make sure it is on level one and 
it has a little bit offset, but if you want something on level two, don't place it on level one and then give it a two meter offset because it will assign them to the uh, wrong level and you will have bad scene layer and scene management there. And also we have layers in Unreal Engine and layers are according to the categories. For example, if you have columns, floors and roofs, you can have them in layers in Unreal Engine. If you have some elements that doesn't have any layer, they will not be in any layer and when you delete all of your layers you can see some of additional elements that they don't have any layer. If you are a data lover you need to know that you can bring uh, some metadata from Revit 2 you can use them for other purposes in Unreal for automation and some of the programming uh, tasks you can do on them and also uh, to inspect all of some elements in Unreal Engine 2 but you need to know we will have instance parameters in Unreal uh, Engine from the Revit part. That's the part of the data you will have in Unreal Engine. If you are using RPC uh, families in your Revit project, they will not be uh, as uh, they look in Revit, they will not be in the same in Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine will bring them in just a 2D or a uh, just a covered object but sometimes uh, the most of the time it is better to delete them in your Revit file but if you want to place uh, other realistic families at the same place as they are you can use them as a placeholder and can use some scripts to replace them and use them as a placeholder for more realistic families in Unreal Engine but the last but not least is the base point and survey point you need to know you will have them as non-geometric data in Unreal Engine, something like this, and you need to, you can find them there. Maybe it's gonna be useful for you. I don't have a really great case uh, use case for that, but that's the tip you need to know about that too. And if you want to learn about the whole process of converting your Revit projects for Unreal Engine, make sure to watch this video, which I will uh, teach you how to convert your Revit files for Unreal Engine 5.